Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I'd like to start my talk off by looking at a few news headlines from this past year. Atrocities committed in Ukraine. Earthquake devastates Turkey. Apocalypse in Hawaii. Seems pretty intense, right? Let's take a look at a few more. Opioid crisis continues. Income inequality escalates. Species are going extinct. Whoa, okay, this is starting to feel like a lot. Teen mental health crisis skyrockets. Malaria epidemic rages. Books are being banned. Is it just me, or is it starting to feel like all these problems are sort of just blending together? Like, if it's impossible for a single person to solve all of these issues, is it even worth trying to solve them at all? There's actually a term used in scientific communities to describe this feeling. Disaster fatigue. In our hyper-connected world, technology can deliver news of global disasters in real time often just minutes after they occur. This constant barrage of negative information can be really overwhelming, leading to a growing sense of apathy towards global disasters. A 2022 study conducted by the Reuters Institute found an unprecedented decline in Americans' engagement with the news, dropping from 63% in 2017 to 51% in 2022. The study also found that 15% of Americans self-identify as actively disconnected from news consumption, highlighting that when presented with a continuous exposure to distressing media, more and more Americans are choosing to turn the news off than tune in. And we can see how this phenomenon of disaster fatigue is shaping the world around us. Take, for example, the ongoing war in Ukraine. A recent study conducted by the Rule of Law Foundation found that global ambivalence about this horrific conflict is at an all-time high, rising by nearly 75% in the past two years. This growing sense of apathy has shaped international relations regarding the war. The willingness of people like you and me to donate to humanitarian efforts, and ultimately, it's the Ukrainian people who bear the burden. And for so many other global issues, we see a pattern start to emerge, where an oversaturation of news rooted in our technologically connected world results in a collective numbing effect, where individual compassion is eroded. So we have these scientific studies showing that the technology that really should be making us more concerned about global disasters the constant stream of news being sent into our social media feeds and digital news platforms is actually making us less concerned. But does it have to be this way? I don't think so. I think that if we keep three points in mind, we can flip this narrative and use technology to fight disaster fatigue. The first way that technology can wield the power to transform apathy into action is when it's used as a catalyst for mass mobilization, harnessing global manpower on an unprecedented scale. This transformative potential is exemplified by projects such as the one led by Ms. Christina Grossen, the wife of Newark Academy faculty member, Mr. Grossen. Ms. Grossen led a team of volunteers with no technical background in using satellite imagery to identify and document Ukrainian cultural sites that were damaged or destroyed due to the war. Through this crowdsourcing effort, Ms. Grossen was able to inspire people like you and me to participate in a global project. Such initiatives illustrate the unique capacity of technology to bring together a diverse set of skills and perspectives from across the globe. By focusing on constructive outcomes and leveraging the collective expertise available worldwide, technology can serve not just as a medium for broadcasting challenges, but as a tool for fostering solutions. The second way 
that technology can inspire change is when it's used as an instrument of self-empowerment. I was able to witness firsthand the empowering ways that technology can be used last summer when I organized the first TechShare Ukraine Use Technology Drive. After learning that the ongoing Russian invasion has threatened to sever Ukraine from the rest of the world. Millions of Ukrainians have been forced to flee into neighboring countries and they often have to leave everything behind, including their personal devices. These refugees need technology to communicate with loved ones back in Ukraine, get new jobs, and generally rebuild their lives. In response, TechShare Ukraine centers around the collection, transportation, and distribution of donated devices directly to Ukrainian refugees. I'm proud to say that as a school community, Newark Academy donated over 50 devices, which I then transported to Krakow, Poland. While in Krakow, I had the honor of working with many incredible people, including Lena Mylakova. On February 24th, 2022, Lena's world changed forever when she was forced to flee Ukraine. She spent that night sleeping between toilets on a train as the surrounding railway district was bombed. Miraculously, Lena and her family made it safely to Krakow, Poland, where she founded the Fundacja Kohem Demniki Ukrainian Refugee Center. Since then, Lena has used technology to build a platform where she advocates for her fellow refugees. Through her story, we can see the pivotal role that technology can play in empowering people like Lena. Technology can provide refugees with a voice that extends beyond their immediate circumstances, allowing them to share their stories, seek assistance, and rebuild their lives with dignity. By restoring their connectivity, we're not just giving refugees devices, we're restoring their hope and the means to fight against the oppression that sought to silence them. The final way that technology's role in raising awareness for global issues can be reimagined is by accentuating the power of a growth mindset. While in Krakow, I had the honor of working with Peter and Barbara Nagliki, who founded the grassroots humanitarian aid organization, Fundacja Krakow dla Ukraini. Every week, Peter risks his life to drive donations to the front lines in Ukraine. Later, Barbara confided in me that sometimes Peter won't speak for days after returning from Ukraine due to the traumatic scenes that he witnesses. When I asked them why they've given so much for this cause, Peter responded that the most important part is not to help, but to help together, and that together we can overcome. To me, this movement of collective effort embodies the growth mindset. I believe that the growth mindset is about believing that through perseverance, we can make a difference. It's about choosing to be the change. I believe that we need to reframe our usage of technology to emulate the growth mindset promoted by Barbara and Peter. This approach involves leveraging social media, crowdfunding platforms, and digital campaigns to unite individuals behind a common goal, emphasizing the collective impact of small contributions. In the face of an immense challenge, while alone we may feel powerless, together we can overcome any challenge. So as I approach the end of my talk here tonight, I want to invite each of you to reimagine the role that technology plays in our lives and the ways that we use it to engage with the problems of the world around us. You don't need to shoulder the weight of all the world's issues alone. Instead, focus on what resonates with you, whether it's climate change, social injustice, or humanitarian aid, your engagement matters. Use technology not just as a source of information, but as a platform for action. So next time you see another news headline proclaiming the next global disaster, Remember that by reshaping the lens through which we view the world, we can change the world itself. And that change, it starts with us. Thank you.